This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Today we're talking to Dr. Christiane Dolacek about her research on enteric fever in Asia. Hi, Christiane. Hi, Jen. How common is enteric fever? Enteric fever is uh, common in developing countries, especially in children and young adults. Um, we don't know the exact numbers, but it's estimated that there are approximately 21 million infections uh, per year worldwide and that it causes approximately 200,000 deaths. And uh, this disease has been um, eliminated in most uh, industrialized countries by treatment of water and sewage and also better food hygiene. And it is uh, caused by two bacteria, it's a bacterial infection uh, Salmonella typhi and Salmonella paratyphi, and those bacteria are ingested uh, through contaminated water or food, and then uh, via the gut enter the blood and then cause a uh, severe bloodstream infection. What is interesting is that this disease actually only infects humans. So actually, we would have the possibility to get rid of it and eradicate it. How is enteric fever treated? Enteric fever is treated with a course of antibiotics over several days, up to two weeks. And, uh, but uh, we see that the bacteria have evolved and developed a drug resistance. So the big problem now is the treatments that we used five or 10 years ago are not effective any longer. So our number of options uh, that are safe and affordable are, are very limited. Why research enteric fever in Asia? Southeast Asia has the biggest burden of uh, enteric fever. And uh, we, um, our research is based in Nepal, a country that has a very high burden. And we uh, work there at two major hospitals, but we also have uh, collaborations and share information uh, and work with other hospitals in Asia and in Africa where this disease is of increasing importance. What are some of the most important lines of research that have developed in the last five to ten years? Our work focuses on um, identifying the best treatment for the patient. Uh, that makes the patient uh, symptoms cure the quickest, but also stops uh, transmission because uh, when the patient is sick, uh, they shed the bacteria in their stools and, and this is the way how the family members uh, and relatives get sick. So by treating the patient, uh, we can actually stop the spread of the disease and reduce the burden of this disease. And one of our major targets is uh, to see how to use the current available antibiotics in the best way. And um, there's also a problem with diagnostics. Um, it, uh, there's no, there are no rapid tests. And um, in order to make the diagnosis, you need blood culture. And those facilities are not available in many countries in Asia or Africa. Why does your line of research matter and why should we invest in it? Enteric fever is a neglected disease, so there's no uh, commercial interest. Uh, but it is still an important disease and it causes uh, huge suffering. And it is uh, very important that the University of Oxford works where the burden is the, the biggest and, um, and tries to make uh, a difference. How does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? In the sense that uh, translational medicine means that we use the best science uh, to benefit the biggest number of patients. That's an excellent example. And our studies are based on clinical trials. So we learn from the patients and um, we ask uh, very practical questions. And um, we also train um, the next generation of uh, doctors and scientists at the Oxford University Clinical Research Unit in Nepal. And uh, we hope that this is a 
a successful and a sustainable partnership and makes a real difference to that disease. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Jen.